Look, as I said, big news out of Canberra today. The Prime Minister announcing a major shake-up of our public service. And what some are calling the biggest shake-up to the public service is since Bob Hawke cut 10 departments back in 1987. Mr Morrison will be reducing the number of departments from 18 to 14, with five departmental heads, or department secretaries they're called, to be axed. The changes will see the Department of Education merged with the Department of Employment and Skills. A new department combining infrastructure, transport, regional development and communications. The Department of Agriculture and Water Resources merged with the Department of Environment. A new Department of Industry, Science, Energy and Resources including emissions reduction and small and family business functions. The Department of Human Services to be re-established as a new executive agency called Services Australia within the broader Department of Social Services. Lots of changes. It's fascinating and I can't commend the Prime Minister enough. Here with more Sky News political reporter Tom Connell joins me out of our Canberra studios. Well Tom, we know that there's been this long running FODI review uh, into how the public service is organised. FODI used to be involved uh, with Telstra as we know, so taking sort of the, um, mm. the understanding and experience of a big large commercial, commercial organisation and applying it over how the public service is managed itself. This is a big move by the PM on the last day of Parliament. I saw some footage a little earlier on from Labor and uh, the Greens bleating about these changes, but how broadly out there in the real world have they been received? I think some of the interesting reception comes from people that used to be in the public service, and I think they're an interesting indicator because they know how it works, but they're no longer in there and, you know, worried about self-protection. And um, some of the reaction has been that there's nothing wrong with trying to, uh, you know, minimise the, the number of different people making decisions and so, as a result, shrink the number of departments. It's how it's done that's crucial. Uh, one interesting bit of feedback is that are you going to shrink the number of people in Cabinet? You know, could you have multiple Cabinet ministers looking over one department and would that be an issue? Scott Morrison was adamant today there wouldn't be any sort of reshuffle. He says all of his ministers are doing a good job every single one apparently Peter so there'll be no reshuffle and that usually happens as well before the break so people can get across their briefs so presumably that means we're in with the, the current uh, ministry and so on uh, for quite some time to come. Uh, you're right to point out as well that Bob Hawke did this uh, and no one had an issue back then so I think the move itself it, there's nothing intrinsically wrong with it. It was interesting that we weren't really ready for this change. The 30 review has been handed back to the government but there wasn't a sort of here's what they said here's what we're doing approach it was just here's what we're doing so perhaps that's welcome from some of the reviews of the past where they happen and nothing happens or one or two taxes are, are, are picked out for example um, but yeah I thought that was that interesting the, the aspect about the, the different number of um, cabinet ministers over one portfolio the other thing that the PM stressed Peter is this is not about saving money it won't be about job cuts other than the department heads that are gone and I think you have to say that's pretty important right now with the jobs market showing signs of weakening and of course very sluggish growth, now is not the time to you know, take the axe through the public service in any major way. No, and look, you're still going to need the same people to do the same functions. They're just reorganised in a different way, but they're reorganised mm. so that there is more of a collaboration. Let's take agriculture. Agriculture, the environment and water. And we can see just in the issue of the Murray-Darling Basin how much uh, the environment works against agriculture on the issue of water. Putting them all together means that you coalesce some of those issues in and around the one department. Now, I disagree a little bit with the Prime Minister. I do think if he could get down to 14 in the Cabinet, the overall numbers in the Ministry are capped at 30. It used to be that the mm. Cabinet was small, you know, let's say 10. The Outer Ministry was large, 20. You blood them in the Outer Ministry and only if they're good enough do they make it into Cabinet. Now it's almost the other way around. You've got a Cabinet well over 20, an Outer Ministry that's much smaller. And, you know, every child wins a prize in Cabinet. I'd catch a Cabinet right down, mm. Prime Minister, and put only the best performers in there, make it a competition to get into Cabinet yeah. and whittle down your portfolios as well. So that, that 14 he named today are the only seats around the table and if you're not good enough, you're out. Yeah, well, you raise the standards that way, of course, Peter, of course and you're you streamlining decision-making. So I think there is an argument for that. And as I said, hearing 
Um, quotes from former mandarins saying that. These are people that want the public service to work well. There's a lot of people in Canberra, as you know, this, the, the functioning of this is close to their hearts. So they, there wasn't a, a probrium around simply reducing the number of departments, but how you go about doing that and what about reflecting that in the Cabinet? I guess the problem uh, right now, uh, imagine dumping a whole host of Cabinet Ministers right now. <laughs> it wouldn't go down all that well. Yeah, I often tell people the story, you know, when when Prime Ministers or leaders of opposition, when they do their shadow cabinets, they ring up, you know, Joe Bloggs to tell mm. him that he's made it into the ministry. He doesn't necessarily thank the leader because he thinks he's fabulous anyway and he's finally his, uh, his <laughs> great sort of expertise has been rewarded. When they're dumped, they're cranky. And if they thought they should have been elevated and they didn't get the call at all, they're cranky as well. So you don't make many friends, even those you help out. Yeah. Um, give me the sense of any wash-up from Medivac, the repeal yesterday. Uh, there were comments made mm. by the New Zealand Prime Minister today to say the option of New Zealand settlement is still on the table. But, of course, if that mm. happens, the government's got to find a way for those that might get to New Zealand, off Nauru and Manus Island, to be given a visa class that doesn't enable that automatic entry into Australia that... Uh, all New Zealanders have under our relationship. Yeah. How, how do they manage that? Look, there's a, a genuine path there. There's a thought that the crossbench make up now because remember they had this lifetime visa plan, a ban legislation on the table. This would apply to anyone arriving by boat uh, to Australia as an asylum seeker. After that cutoff date that Kevin Rudd gave, remember, this would mean any of them could never get any sort of visa to Australia. Now it was blocked because Labor and the crossbench thought it went too far. It banned even people being resettled in the US. Now it banned people wanting to come here on a tourist visa or say, you know, here to, to go to a conference or whatever that might be. There's a thought maybe the current crossbench would not be opposed to it. And certainly if it was restricted to the New Zealand cohort, that there would be support. Now, there's a bit of complexity here, Peter, around whether or not there might be, you know, a couple of visa classes are still allowed, a tourist and maybe a business one, and the rest banned, and, and whether the government would be able to stomach that or whether they'd say, no, we can't have, you know, confusion, people smugglers will use that message to ply their trade. So uh, there is some complexity there, but the other crucial development, you mentioned there, Jacinda Ardern, she says she doesn't like this move on, on the, the visa ban, so you're creating a a different type of citizen, I guess, with one reduced right in New Zealand. They can't go to Australia, but it's up to Australia. So that wouldn't be a deal breaker for New Zealand. So there's a genuine path there. Uh, Labor's pushing ahead and saying limit to the, to the New Zealand cohort. So we'll see the response from the government. I think it's incumbent on Labor to probably stop uh, and not go on too much about the deal because, look, we know basically what's happened and we'll probably hear it from Jackie Lambie herself eventually when she fronts the media, but she got a, a reassurance they're pursuing the New Zealand deal, which they always were. From the government side, it's incumbent on them to pursue the New Zealand deal in good faith. If you can get a deal that realistically well, isn't going to have a offer. national security... Yeah, I think we get, yeah, we yeah, better exactly. drop the word deal. There's no, there's no quid pro quo. There's, there's an offer and it's just sorting through the visa classification. Yeah, uh, well, so yeah I'm, I'm, I'm referring to, you know, the, the deal that New Zealand said, but you're right, you know, it's an offer, they said, 150. It's not a quid pro quo with New Zealand either. So, yeah, yeah I, but I think they should be pursuing that in good faith because it's genuinely on the table. It's not the solution to everything. This was a huge backlog, and there are still uh, about uh, 1,600 or so people in total that are in some sort of limbo the government needs to resettle. So, you know, 150 doesn't solve that, so that, solve that problem, but it's a step in the right direction. So th there's a path for the government now on that. Absolutely. And let's uh, I remind people yet again, the 50,000 were the result of Labor. The Coalition's just left to mop it up. Chom O'Connell, well, there you go. Big week, a big week, a big year for you. 2019 mm. parliamentary year behind you. Enjoy. Well, you're not going to take a break, I know, but you enjoy the slide down no. into sort of more <laughs> ordinary times as opposed to the, the usual circus that's Canberra. Thanks for your help tonight. Thanks, Peter.